Hello there, a new episode of Star Wars Unlimited on my channel today. We're going to be talking about the legendary cards in the third set of Star Wars Unlimited, but it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to use two tier lists. We're going to put tier lists in playability, so good cards, fantastic cards, unplayable cards, and then the second tier list at the same time with the prediction of prizes that I will think those cards will end up after like two, three weeks so yeah that's gonna be about it and let's jump into the video but before we do uh, gonna do that we'll just tell you that today's video is sponsored by rebel.pl where you can find all the games and all the card games that you want uh if you want to visit their store it'll be fantastic you have some good deals there and of course you can buy star wars unlimited uh, as well now let's start with the tier lists so i prepared two of them right one one is like this tier s then we have very playable. Then we have the okay cards. Then we have some niche cards. Niche cards are like, you know, they might be okay, but they are gonna end up very rarely used because they're gonna be very niche in application. And then unplayable. Hopefully we don't end up with any unplayable legendaries over here. Uh, and then in the second tier list, we're gonna have uh, different tiers of prizes. So 40 plus dollars. So kind of thing like, like Vader look in this first set. And we have $30, $20, $10, $5, and below 5 and below 3. Hopefully not many of those. So, uh, let's start. We're going to go through all of the legendaries all together. So, it's, um, let's start with the end, maybe. Now, there are two of them. So, yellow color. Um, if you control exactly one unit, play a non-vehicle unit from your hand that shares a trait with the unit you control. It costs 5 less. Now, I think we're going to start with this... Um, power level tier card um i think there are two of them is actually okay but it's gonna be niche and application as well because you have to craft a deck around it but because some of the decks um tip and i think about underworld in general is just gonna be a uh, it's, a, it's like an archetype that is already playable and you can just slot this card in because of that it goes from niche to okay. Like this card is the one of the legendaries that I'm actually looking forward to in this set, but it's not something that in my opinion will like completely make a new deck. I don't think it's a right way to play this card if you just want to build an entire deck that only focuses on this card. I think, like for example in Boba Green, if you would like to play now there are two of them you essentially just kind of put like two copies into your normal deck and that's it you know like uh, i don't think you should be like people want to cut super laser technician or stuff like that i'm like no please don't do that like the card itself is pretty decent you can just play it by itself and if you don't need it you just resource it you know you don't want to make your deck inconsistent because you're going to be putting too many stuff like this you know think about it this way this card is able like you can you you can do the, you can do it this way on turn two you play resupply or super laser technician then on the next turn you either go instantly activate your leader or sacrifice the technician then use your leader and now you have a underworld unit on your board you have five mana so you can play now there are two of them and you can play from your hand a seven drop so like a mole uh, that shares of course the underworld trait so you can play a mole right or you <laughs> or you can play um cat right bane for example so and that's quite broken you know so uh we're gonna put it as it's okay range now when it comes to price i think that now our two of them is gonna be around ten dollars because it's a uh event events are not really that expensive the most expensive events are like super laser blast and vigilance those cards um uh those cards are like incredibly playable because they affect the board state right uh while this event is kind of like a sneak attack right so i don't think it's gonna be super duper expensive i would uh i would predict it around being around this mark like 10 to 15 dollars uh, max but not at the beginning of the expansion at the beginning of expansion it's probably going to be like 20 plus but it's going to take like around two three weeks to stabilize that price and i would put it around ten dollars all right let's go uh to the next one 
So we go to uh, Chancellor Palpatine. Th that is so unlucky that this card is is double yellow. Like I understand why because it's you know he's super duper cunning, uh, but I would love to see this card being single yellow and maybe even heroic or just straight up villain, because then it would make more sense to play him in the Chancellor Palpatine leader deck. So I don't know. Four mana, two six. Each token unit you create enters, enters play is ready. If a unit play, uh, left play this phase, create a clone trooper unit. The problem with this card is that one, the stats are not that great. Double cunning decks are not looking to play a four drop that is two six, at least not now. Uh, and even though the effect is pretty okay, uh, the first one, each token you create enters play is ready. It doesn't really like do anything when when you play them, right? You would have to have a unit on board already that like when dies creates a token so then you play palpatine then you sacrifice the other unit and then you get a token that attacks for one or two I, that's not that really great so then you only have an effect when you attack with him but when you have to attack with him but the effect on the attack only applies when you already have a unit that left play this phase so it, you can't even start the round by doing that so I, I really don't like the way that he's being built. Um, and because of that, uh, we're going to put him in uh, Chancellor Palpatine as a niche card that might find some applications, but will not generally be super duper compelling to play. And because of that, I'm going to put him as well on the $5 mark as a legendary. Kind of similar to like DJ from previous set, you know, like... Like, it has some applications, but DJ was actually more playable than this, because DJ is a 3-mana three 3-5, three even if you don't play him for his text. This guy is just 4-mana 2-6. Not the best. Uh, so, yeah. Now we're gonna go to the next legendary, which is Ahsoka Tano. 4-mana 3-4... Sorry, 3-mana three 3-4, three Vigilance... Uh, uh, not Vigilance, Cunning uh, Heroism, so yellow-white. While you control few, fewer units than an opponent, including this unit, this unit against Ambush. Now, th if this would not include this unit, this, this card would be tier S. But unfortunately, it does. Ambush is still probably the most powerful keyword in the game, so yeah. Action. For 2, return this unit and each upgrade on, the, um, on her to the owner's hand. Now, this action is not really something that you're going to be doing a lot, probably... Probably not, I would say probably once, but I don't know, 30 games maybe or something like that. Uh, but her stats are decent, her traits are okay, she has Force Jedi, um, and she potentially has Ambush if your opponent has two units and you have no units, because then she comes into play with Ambush directly. So Ahsoka is, in my opinion, um, let's start with this one. Uh, for the yellow white decks, she I'm like a little bit torn because yellow white decks do play Ezra, and Ezra has exactly the same stats, very similar traits, and potentially very high upside. I don't think we're gonna play both, but a three mana three four is very playable. So I would put it at very playable because she might directly replace um. Ezra in the uh, yellow white decks uh, and she potentially has a big upside so we're gonna put her over here and uh, because of that we're also gonna put her where's Ahsoka here we go I would put her in the same mark as uh, the two of them now the reason why is just because I don't think she's like she's easily replaceable and I don't think she's just that powerful to be worth more than anything that is more than $15, I think. So I think she's going to be like around that $10 mark. All right. Mm, next one. We're going to go for Cad Bane. Now, I might be biased a little bit because I think this card is great. So Cad Bane, seven mana. Uh, he cunning a villainy. Underworld and Botany Hunter. Very relevant traits, by the way, right? Stats are pretty decent. 777 is more than okay when played this unit captures up to three enemy non leader units with a total of eight or less remaining hp on attack the defending player may rescue a card that they own um uh, guarded by this unit if they do draw two cards now i think this card on like seven resource when you don't cheat out mana and so on is not that great but fortunately for you there's a there's an archetype that can play him faster 
notably Boba Green. And it just slots in perfectly. Now, I do think that it's going to be worth trying out decks that play like two Vaders, three Moles, and two Cat Banes. Cat Bane is also fantastic with the two, of, there's two of them. Because if you, for example, can play that resupply into activate Boba Leader into, uh, there's two of them into Cat Bane, that probably will win you most games. Because it's so tempo broken. Like, and it's going to be so hard to answer. So I think Cad Bane is actually, uh, wait, this is prizes. Um, Cad Bane, we're going to put him in very, very playable. I don't think it's tier S, but I think he's very, very playable, much more even than Ahsoka. Um, and because he's a big legendary with big numbers, we're going to put him at $20. I don't think he's going to be more expensive. Uh, for example, if Maul was a legendary, I think he would be $40 plus. Cat Bane doesn't have himself like this kind of like impact or brand recognition, <laughs> like a Maul or Vader. But in my opinion, he's one of those legendaries that will be between 20 to 25 because he's still very playable. And he is, um, I would say, could be a replacement as well for if you don't have a Vader, for example, in a, in a green Boba deck. Or you don't have that much cash to spend, you can still play play Cat Bane and, and like shift your deck into a different direction. So Cat Bane, like anything between twenty to like twenty eight dollars, I would say. Uh, that's gonna be the mark. Uh, remember, because this is like twenty, right? The next one is thirty, so this is gonna be like twenty plus, right? Um, Okie dokie. Now, uh, next one, we're gonna be starting with the red cards and we start with planetary invasion for 12 mana with exploit three we're already up to three units each of those units gets plus one plus zero and gains overwhelm for this phase now guys this costs 12 even if you sacrifice three units it will cost six but if you do that that means that you can ready up to three units that attacked already so in in theory i'm like trying to paint a picture here right to play this effectively, in the ideal scenario, you would need six units. Three of them already attacked. Then you play Planetary Invasion, sacrifice three units for six mana, and the other three get ready and get plus one and the overwhelm. Now, that is a fairy land. That is just... Uh, that is not happening. And you can compare this to Final Showdown, which does essentially the same for just six... Right, it gives you only one turn, but this this is like a this is kind of the same type of card. Like you want to win by playing this card, and this card is just I don't know. Like it will require you to also play some kind of different uh, red deck that go very 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 high in mana. So probably a green red deck with ramp. I don't see this card even close to being playable. I'll be very honest. This is this is the card that I'm gonna put an unplayable tier. Um, I don't like it. I don't think it's going to see any play. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm going to put it below the $3 mark. I think it's going to probably cost like a dollar and a half as a legendary, oh, which sucks. All right. Uh, next red card, unlimited power. Six mana, double red, deal four damage to a unit, then three damage to a second unit, then two damage to a third unit, and one damage to a fourth unit. All damage is dealt simultaneously. Now... I personally like this card, but I do agree that it's a little bit underwhelming. Because the potential maximum... Wait, this is the prices. Uh, the potential maximum of this card is just like... It's only four. And to be fair, if this was like a five mana card that dealt three to one, I probably think it would be like five mana, one red. I think that would be make, make this card very playable. But six mana double red with three two one, if sorry four three two one damage, that's only probably playable in a Maze Window deck. So I think we're gonna put it in a niche. I think this is potentially weaker than um, um sorry not potentially weaker. It's kind of similar to uh, Force Lightning, but Force Lightning has actually a lot of application because it's just one mana and it's one red. So I don't know. I like the card, but I I don't see it being used that often. It it kind of it's kind it kind of sucks that it's double red. I wish this card would have been just one red because that would make its applications way wider when it comes to the variety of the decks that you would see it in. Because for eight mana, this is 
definitely not a good deal for six mana it's like an okay deal and for mace wind is actually a pretty decent card but it's very slow because it requires multiple actions now because it's niche because it's double red we're gonna put this card at five dollars probably maybe even below five actually now when i think about it because it's an event people don't like that yeah we're gonna put it in below five but it's like up like four dollars essentially this is like anything between not five and nine right so we're gonna put it on this this tier this tier all right next card we're gonna go for resolute oh my god so resolute is a 10 mana vehicle a capital ship red heroism 8-8 eight, eight. this unit costs one less mana resource to play for every five damage on your base when played and on attack deal two damage to an enemy unit and each other enemy unit with the same name as that unit so essentially this is like a card that says yay kill all the tokens for no like for a lot of mana and you kind of like if you want to play this cheaper you would have to be losing by a lot so I don't, I don't know. Like if you compare this to a to a like a devastator, like the devastator deals ten potentially ten damage to a singular unit and just kills a big threat. This is just anti token, and that's it. And I know it has on on attack later, but it has no sentinel. It has no. It has nothing. Like it's absolutely terrible, and yet it's still not the worst legendary of the set. So that's kind of yeah. That's a problem. Um, so we're going to put it... I mean... Yeah, we're going to put it in unplayable. <laughs> we're going to put it in unplayable. Like, it's it's not final, finalizer level of bad. But I don't, I don't think that red-white Harrow's decks would even want to play that. If this card would have at least Sentinel, or if, it, or, the, or, or, or if this card would be like a ground unit that has sent now that would have made this card actually pretty decent but because it's in space it should probably affect only ground and it has no way of affecting the board state apart from the two damage directly right it has no ambush it has no sentinel i'm putting this uh, down to unplayable and we're because of that we'll also be putting it in the three dollar mark oh man the red is not even good in this expansion that's for sure that is for sure all right next one uh we have darth maul and that's a villainy legendary five mana five six uh in aggression this unit can attack two units instead of one now this card is just good you know and it's incredibly good with ambush so with ecl that's about it the card is really good if it has ambush uh and okay if it doesn't have ambush and it's a Darth Maul so I would say it's okay uh it's not super duper playable um because I mean okay if you play red villainy you probably don't even have anything better so but you know what we're gonna put it in very playable because for the red red black decks that you play you don't even have a better card to put in the five mana now when I think about it but the problem is that his power level is like if you have an ECL deck, he's very playable. If you don't have an ECL deck, then he's just like, it's okay. So he has some potential upside because if whenever you play like an upgrade on him or like an effect, he's gonna be swinging for a million, right? Um, and that's that might be it. And unfortunately, he's not able to attack a base and a unit because that would make him actually incredibly playable. If he, would, he, if he was able to attack a base and a unit at the same time. But unfortunately, he can only attack two units. But there's still some potential. Like I, I think... All right, because he is only playable in essentially villain decks that are red. We're going to put him at very playable because for those decks, he's very playable. But I think he, uh, he is very playable because you have ECL or timely intervention to decks. Otherwise, he's just okay. But we're going to put it in very playable. Now, when it comes to the price, because his application is very niche, we're going to put him as the same as Ahsoka Tano, essentially like around $10. All right, next legendary, we're going to have Gore. Now, Gore, we're not going to spend a lot of time on him. He's a, he's a big unit. 
but actually actually not that big of a unit. Like he's 12 mana 7-7 seven, seven that you can play for 6 if you exploit 3. Has some good keywords, Sentinel Ambush, but his stats are not super big when you consider the cost. Um, so uh, I would say that, and remember also, Gore is going to be printed to Oblivion because of the showdowns. He's going to be top 8. He's going to have an alternate art that is actually nicer than this one, in my opinion. Um, and that alternate art is going to be available for top 8 in a showdown. So I think he's gonna be below five dollars just because of that. Now, when it comes to his playability, um, I'm gonna put him in niche, but like top of the niche. Actually, we'll do it this way. So uh, we're gonna put him in niche. I don't think he's like super duper okay. I don't think every deck wants to play him. Like green decks already have so many units that they want to play for like big, 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 um, big uh, cost. So yeah, but it, as a as a price, he's gonna be incredibly cheap. Not at the be not at the beginning of the expansion, by the way. We're talking about prices that are gonna stabilize, right? So once the uh once the expansion stabilizes, the store shorters like are being played out. Gore is gonna tank in price, like by a lot. He might start as like a ten legend ten dollar legendary, or even maybe twenty at the beginning, but no one will, should buy him at this price. And then he's gonna just tank over here when the showdowns up here um all right now we have clone clone is a card i would love i would love to play but i don't think i will like essentially the best case scenario for him is like cloning like a snoke or like a crate dragon but at the same time we're gonna be playing multiple copies of those cards anyway so would you put a clone on it on top of that probably not I don't think this I I it's gonna be a niche, niche legendary um that you probably will never find a lot of applications for. Um if this would clone vehicles, I know. Well, how would you clone a vehicle? Makes no sense, right? Um Yeah, it's very niche application, I would say. Very, very niche applications. Because even if it's clone if you clone your opponent's unit, like you don't do anything about the opponent's unit itself. So um, niche application and a sub five probably around five like four to five dollars I would say like this all right now we have a uh, Pyrrhic assault double green for this phase each friendly unit gains when defeated deal two damage to enemy unit now Pyrrhic assault is not a terrible card by itself not a terrible card by itself, but I think like you have to essentially put your deck into a into a uh, into a direction of creating a lot of tokens, and that's gonna be very niche. And then you try to like trade into because you need to destroy your units, so you either trade into other units or you exploit them, and then you deal damage to the unit. But to make this work, you would need like two units. If you play this for free, and you deal four damage, that's not a great deal. If you deal six, that's okay deal. But again, you have to play double green. So. I would say Peric Assault is a very niche uh, card, very niche card that was going to be very cheap as well. So like around here, below five bucks. Um, then we go into Ayla Sekura. Now this, this card I very like. And fortunately for not the text, <laughs> she's just a five mana, six, five uh, in green heroism with very relevant traits. So Force and Jedi. Um, and the coordinate on attack is like probably Fairyland land because you should probably never have this, those amount of units, but she is for five in green decks. Five is like that sweet spot when you typically play like a resupply and then suddenly you can play a five drop and this five drop, um, is pretty relevant because let's, um, there's one leader that I forgot the name, but I remember his effect. He's a five mana, Vo I think Vos is his name. Um, so how he works is that 
when you play a unit, you can tap the leader and deal one damage to a unit of the same cost. So essentially, Isla Sakura is able to deal seven damage to a unit that costs five. Now let's think about it, what, what that is. Hmm, that's Boba Green. Yeah. So you kill a Boba if you have an ECL. Now, unfortunately, that makes this card only playable with an ECL, essentially. Um, yeah. So, I think it's okay. And I think she's going to be a staple in, in the Voss decks. Because you, you like she's going to be better in those Voss decks than Steadfast Battalion. Um, but I, I don't think like there's a wide application for it. So, Ayla Sakura lands herself in It's Okay tier. Uh, and I don't even know, like, I'm, I'm like a casual Star Wars fan, so I don't really know, like, who is she. So I would put her, like, on top of, like, the $5, like, 5 plus, right? So she's gonna be, like, be anything between 5 to 10, I would say. That's gonna, like, she's gonna be probably around, like, 8 bucks or something like that, you know? I'm gonna add plus over here. Okay. So, uh, next one, we get the Invasion of Christophus. It's a 15 resource. Exploit four, choose an opponent, defeat each unit that player controls. Now, I actually do think this is not a bad card. Because it's a non-symmetric effect that is hard to pull off, but it's a big payoff. So I think this could be playable in sideboards for control decks when they want to go very long and then just essentially cripple opponent's side of the board while saving theirs. So I don't think this is a terrible card. I think it's a very niche card, but it's not terrible. Now, because it's going to be such a, such, a, such a niche card, it's going to be also very cheap. So I'm going to put it over here at the bottom of the five dollars, below $5. So it's probably going to be in between like 3 to 5 it's gonna be cheap because it's gonna be seeing it's gonna see like little to no play only like a sideboard plan most likely um then we have ki adi mundi for five mana five seven coordinate text doesn't matter if it happens it's fantastic but it's like this card is just a five mana five seven generic blue with very relevant traits so force and jedi so that makes him more than okay i think uh, blue already has a lot of targets uh, or, or like a lot of cards that he can play for five mana so because of that i'm not putting him in very playable i'm putting him in, in it's okay but he's a he's a relevant unit and he's gonna um he's gonna be very decent in one type of deck and that's a deck that is just hunt to blue because he's able to be played for five sorry for four as a five five force jedi now that's sweet for Hantu Blue, he's a straight up upgrade um, uh, 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 because it, it it pushes the potential Jedi, uh, sorry, potential Force applications um, with this. So I think Kai Adimundi is very very good, uh, but because the five slot is like, you know, a little bit crowded, um, he's not gonna be super sought for, and because of that, we're gonna put him at like bottom of the ten dollar. Like he's gonna be around this this part uh okay now we have uh satin cries or chris i don't know how to read it four mana zero six vigilance white and yeah well look this card only works in mill mil decks the also the problem with this card is that it gives the uh, your opponent the same thing to do so it's a symmetrical effect i think it's um People will try to make Mildex works work. You know, she's gonna be an incredibly niche card, incredibly niche card, um, and I think it's not gonna work. So she's gonna be bottom of the barrel over here, but not unplayable because she's like still like a weird unit, you know. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. I completely botched right here. We changed this. That's my bad. It should be below. I don't know. It's early morning. Sorry for that. Thank you for noticing, Speedy. Uh, so, yeah, this should be below, not above. Um, 
And then, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think the decks will work. They need more support. And this card is still, like, pretty understated. 406 is not great. She can be dealt with very quickly. Uh, so, yeah, we're putting her in this tier um, with the niche applications. And we have only one legendary left, and that's General Grievous. And General Grievous is a 3-mana 4-4. Four, four. With no text. And that makes him the best <laughs> legendary in this set. This, is, this sounds kind of bad when you say it out loud like this. Uh, he's a tier S legendary just because of his stats. And this will actually probably spawn a new type of vigilance black decks because you might actually think about doing some aggressive black blue decks uh, instead of just going off the route of, yeah, we, we're playing some soft controls. And even soft controls want to have him anyway. Like, he's just that good. The stats, the print, the printed stats on him, 3 mana, 4-4, four, four, are just so powerful that every black-blue deck currently would like to run him. Doesn't matter what he does. He's just a good unit. So, but even with this as a tier S and the most playable legendary in this set, I would not put him at the $40. I think he's going to be like around 25 maybe less. So he's going to be like on top of this. So I don't think a single legendary in this set, when it comes to normal prints, not, not hyperspace, not hyperfoils, just normal legendaries, I don't think a single legendary will reach more um, than 30 bucks after the entire... Uh, after the entire set stabilizes. Well, Cad Bane was going to be probably like around 40 at the beginning, but he's going to go down, in my opinion, because of the limited applications. While General Grievous, he's going to have ge very generous applications because every black blue deck is going to play him, but I don't think he's going to be worth more than 30 bucks. So he's going to settle around like 20 to 25. So yeah, uh, this, is, uh, this is what I think about the legendaries in this set. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and, uh, hopefully I'm wrong. I'll be very honest with you. I am, I'm hoping I'm wrong and we can like put those five, six legendaries a tier up. Um, probably Isla was going to end up over here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I would love if the cards would be worth more when it comes to legendaries in this set. So. Let me know in the comments if you think that I'm wrong. Am I stupid? Am I clever? Uh, genius? Or what else did you think about the, the both of the tier lists? But mostly about this one with the prizes. All right. Bye-bye. See ya.